Today we'll hopefully give you plenty of time to ask your personal questions, but before we get there, I thought that I might um, do a few tips and techniques for Windows users, this is, and focus today on mouse tricks. Um, most of you are familiar with clicking on the left mouse button to select things. You may not be constantly using your right mouse button to click on things, but you should. Um, because clicking the right mouse button is a very useful tool, and if you're not sure what's going to happen when you click on the right mouse button, you should do it, because what will happen is that a menu will pop up in the context of where you right-clicked. Right now, I'm in the middle of the LibreOffice um, PowerPoint clone uh, slide presentation, and if I right-click at this point, the mouse or, or the mouse brings up a context menu that's in the context of the program I'm using. So I can go to the next slide, the previous slide, etc. When I right-click in the context of this menu, however, keep the right-clicking in mind wherever you're using uh, your Windows, because magic things uh, will happen and you will find it very useful uh, and save yourself a lot of time and effort. I'm going to left click which will bring up the next screen. In Windows there is a dialog box called mouse properties and what I'm going to do is in Louis the laptop up here I'm going to press my Windows key on the keyboard which will open up the start menu and down here in this lower right corner, I'm going to do one of those right clicks in that lower left corner. I said right, I lied. When I right click on that start icon, I get a context menu that allows me to do things like open up the control panel. So I'm going to select or left click on the control panel and that you may be familiar with. That's where you get to adjust all kinds of things in Windows. For this purpose, I want to mess with a mouse. So from the control panel, I'm going to select the mouse option, and that opens up this mouse properties window. I'm going to set the control panel aside here now and focus on this mouse properties menu. Um, I've enlarged it here in my slideshow, which I think you can probably see a little better than the real working version. There are several tabs across the top of the mouse properties dialog box. The first one says buttons. Uh, most of you will not mess with this option. However, if you're left-handed, you would like to know about this because the default setting of the left and right mouse buttons is really designed for right-handers. If you're left-handed, you have an option here to switch those two buttons. And why would you want to do that if you're left-handed? Because usually your index finger does most of the work. And if you're left-handed, you'd like your left index finger to be the select button. If you're right-handed, you'd like your right index finger to push on the select button. So if you're left-handed, you don't have to do it backwards from, from all of your friends. You can make your index finger be the select button by switching this by selecting the buttons option in the mouse properties dialog box and then toggling that option. You can also adjust the double click speed and you can mess with this and, and uh, if you double click on something and it's not responding the way you expect, you may try adjusting this speed until your double click speed is recognized nicely by the computer. The click lock option here enables you to highlight or drag without holding down the mouse button. Um, you may or may you may or may not want to use that. I don't use it because it messes with my mind because my brain is fossilized with using that option off. The next tab in the mouse properties dialog box is the pointers tab. And uh, one of the options is what scheme you use for
before your mouse, what does that mean? It, what that means is there are a whole bunch of different pointers. Let me pull up the real one here again. Um, I'll open up this window. So this is the active one. Uh, this is the illustration. Click on the pointers tab and you'll notice under scheme there is a little down pointing arrow and there's a whole list of different pointers, pointing schemes. So it's not just the main pointer but there are other pointers, the hourglass or whatever. You can try those out and see which one you like. Uh, for example, if I use a magnified system scheme and then I click apply, you can see what that did. Not very visible as far as what it did. Here we go. Windows inverted extra large system scheme. Let me apply that. And up here it looks like a black pointer. However, when you move the pointer across different things, you notice that uh, it, the, the pointer changes color depending on the background that it's on. So when I move this over to a white area, it's black. When I move it over to a blue area, it's yellow. And if I hurt its little head by moving it halfway between uh, colored areas, you notice what happens is it's inverting the color it finds behind it. Some of you may find the mouse pointer is more visible with the inverted scheme. However, most of the time, the first thing I do is I go in and use the Windows Standard Extra Large System Scheme because I want that pointer to be as large and as visible as, as possible for my tired eyes. On this same uh, tab in the Mouse Properties dialog box, there's this option here that says Enable Pointer Shadow. And you can turn that on and off by clicking on the text box. Uh, when you enable the pointer shadow, it just puts a little tiny shadow around the edge. And I find that it makes the pointer slightly more visible when I'm moving it across different things, especially when I'm moving it across uh, an area that's close to the color of the mouse pointer. So I usually choose the extra large system scheme and uh, turn on the pointer shadow. When I go to the pointer options part of uh, this, go to the pointer options, uh, I can change the pointer speed. And some of you, if you experiment with this and you set it too fast, some of you may go crazy because you move it just a little ways and it cursor jumps way across the screen. If you put it too slow, it may drive you crazy because you've got to move it a long ways before the cursor goes any place. It depends on your, your finger dexterity, what's the best speed for you, and uh, if you're using a, a regular mouse. Um, by the way, this is an aside. There are some folks um, around, some of our friends, whose finger and court hand coordination and dexterity is not as good as it was when we were 20. And in some cases we have some people with maybe even preliminary Parkinson's who, who have the shakes and using a mouse can be a real problem in that case. What we have in our computer room for demonstration purposes is a very large trackball. If you go in and see it, it'll look, the, the ball is about the size of a billiard ball and it sits in a little cradle with two buttons that look like Mickey Mouse ears. And instead of, and you plug that in the same way you do a mouse. Now instead of pushing the mouse around to make the cursor move, you just roll that ball with the palm of your hand. One of the advantages of that is it removes the problem of having, you know, stuttery fingers and, and hard to hold the mouse solid. The other is that if you're limited in desk space, having that kind of track ball uh, is handy because you don't have to keep moving the mouse, picking it up, putting it down again when you ran off the, the screen or you didn't get as far as you wanted. You just keep rolling that ball and the ball is always in the same place. So if you're interested in that as an option, uh, it's not inexpensive, it's not a nine dollar option, but you may want to come in and try it out in the computer room. We've had a number of people who could no longer use the mouse 
but still wanted to do computing, and the giant trackball saved them. Uh, it allowed them to keep uh, computing for a lot longer than they could have otherwise. So that's a, an aside. And, and when you're using a trackball, this pointer speed option uh, also has an effect as far as how much rolling of the trackball you have to do to move the pointer from one side of the screen to the other. And uh, all of those are personal adjustments. The next option in the pointer options is the snap to or there's an option to automatically move the pointer to the default button in a dialog box. I always turn that on. And the reason I do, you might wonder, what is a default button in a dialog box? Well, for example, in this dialog box that's right here, you may notice that there are three buttons, OK, Cancel, and Apply. And one of those is highlighted already. That's the default button in that dialog box. If I chose to delete a file, it would open up a little dialog box, and the default dialog box, or the default button in the dialog box, would again be OK. When I'm, doing, when I'm deleting files, it's awfully nice to have this automatically move the pointer to that button turned on, because otherwise, when I go to delete a file, I want to say, OK, I have to move the mouse around to go find that button and click on it. But with this toggle turned on, my mouse is already on the OK button. So when I go delete, and I'm ready to click right then. Usually, when I go to delete something, I'm not going to cancel. I have the option, but, it, but many more than 90% of the time when I choose that, that option that opens the dialog box, I want to next click on the OK button. And if the mouse is already there, hey, I'm, I'm a step ahead of the game. Another option on the uh, Mouse Properties Pointer Options dialog box is to display pointer trails. You might notice when I'm wiggling the mouse around, you can see that I have that option turned on. Some people find that very annoying. I usually do it when I'm using Louie for a presentation because I think that it makes it slightly easier when I'm moving the mouse for people to find the mouse cursor and follow where it is. And you may or may not like that on your computer, but there are times when I think that can be very useful. If I don't like it anymore, I just go to that option, go click with the left mouse button, and I toggle that off. And there's an adjustment for how long the pointer trail is. I have it set right now for long, so you can see about how long those are. And you notice it depends on how fast I'm moving the mouse, how far are those tr apart those little trail things are. If I slide this down to very short and say apply, now you see the, the pointer trail is so short you probably can't even see the trail. So you, you can adjust that trail length and uh, make it the way it seems to work for you. There's another option here. If you're doing mostly word processing, you may not like to have the pointer on the screen while you're typing. Well, you can turn that option uh, on or off, uh, depending on your preference. Maybe you're using a mouse and sometimes you just you can't see where that pointer is without wiggling the mouse all over the place. But there is an option here that you can turn on that will show you where the pointer is whenever you press the control key. So you don't have to wiggle the mouse all over the place to find where the pointer is. If you turn that option on, you just press the control key and it'll go flash and you'll see where the mouse cursor is. The uh, next tab option in the Mouse Properties dialog box says Wheel. And there are two, two choices in this dialog box, vertical scrolling and horizontal scrolling. And what you can do is you can adjust this so that when you roll the little wheel under your finger, each time you click, I don't know if you notice, if you have a, a very sensitive fingers, you can tell, whoops, that was a mistake. Uh, you can tell what, what happens in this, in this presentation software. When I roll the wheel, it will advance the slide. And if I roll the wheel the other way, it'll unadvance the slide. And I shouldn't have tried rolling the wheel in, uh, during the middle of the, the slideshow. In any case, you can feel that that wheel has sort of very subtle click, 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 clicks. They're hard to feel, but what you can do is you can adjust 
how many lines the, each one of those little clicks of your wheel will jump when you roll it. Or you can adjust it so when you touch that wheel and roll it, it'll jump a whole screen ahead. And if you're on some websites that have 24 pages or 36 pages, that could be handy if you want to jump a page at a time. Um, I have mine right now set to five lines at a time. Sometimes, in some situations, when you wheel, when you roll that mouse wheel, you'll be scrolling horizontally. That usually happens if you have a display that's too wide to fit in the window that you're displaying it on, and then it'll be a horizontal scroll bar, and then the wheel will be operating horizontally in that, that situation. So there's an option to adjust also. There's a hardware tab here, but that's beyond the scope of this discussion. Okay, mousing along. Um, let's talk about text selection. This applies if you're doing word processing, and it applies if you're doing uh, any kind of typing and, and typing of text, maybe in uh, word, uh, emails as well as word processing. There are four options here I'm going to talk about. And, and you don't have to write these down because they're in the uh, current newsletter, but make a mental note of these four because we're going to go and demonstrate them and, and we'll come back to this. There is something, a trick called the click-shift-click trick. There is also a double-click trick. There's a triple-click trick. There's a quadruple-click trick. And... There's the add the control key trick to the click tricks. Um, let me jump over here to, well, here's a draft copy of the current newsletter that I can use to demonstrate the mouse selection tricks. If you wanted to select some text, most people, when they first get started, they learn that they can click and drag and make a selection. Uh, I learned fairly early on that that was dangerous because a lot of times I'll click and drag and I'll stutter and I'll drag that selected text off to some place I didn't want it to be and then I have an editing nightmare. So a slightly more positive way to select a bunch of text is to put the cursor someplace. I'm going to put it right in front of the V and I, I, let me zoom in here a little bit on this, I think. Magnify that about 200%. Okay, I've got the cursor at the front of the V on Viewmaster. The shift click trick is I'm going to hold the shift key down and then I'm going to click someplace else and it selects everything from where I first clicked to where I shift clicked. So suppose that I do it this way. I click before the T and the and uh, I shift click there and you'll see it selected a whole bunch of words. Now that they're selected, I can do all the standard things that I might want to do when I've selected text. If I right-click, for example, remember that right-click trick, if I right-click, I get a new context menu in the context of where I'm at now, and I can, I can cut or copy uh, what is selected, and I could do some other things. So the shift the click shift trick is very handy. So I can click somewhere and I can hold the shift down and click somewhere else and I have a more precise way of selecting a collection of characters or text. Okay, that's the shift click trick. Now for the double click trick. If I double click with a cursor in the middle of a word click, click, it selects the word that I double clicked on. Click, 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 selected the word even though the word was hyphenated and wrapped around because of word wrap. Um, so double click will select the word that you double click on. Let me uh, unmagnify that, get a little more on here. So, click, shift click, grabs a bunch of text from beginning click to ending click. 
double click selects a word under the cursor when you double clicked. What about triple click? Well, let's try it. Click, click, click. Triple click in the context of the LibreOffice Writer word processor, and it works in most word processing software. Triple click will select a sentence. Oh, this computer is really smart. I mean, it knows where the end of the sentence is. Isn't that interesting? If I go over here in, in this place, I go click, 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 and it selected that entire sentence. Sometimes when you're composing text, you'd like to pick up a sentence and put it somewhere else. You'd like to rearrange your text. So the trick is triple click, select the sentence, right click, and cut it. And when you cut it, what it'll do is it'll remove it from that location and put it in the secret uh, clipboard. And then when you go put the cursor in a new location and say paste, it'll copy it from the clipboard to the new location. So if you're editing text and you want to move a sentence, the old triple click trick is very handy. Click, click, click. Well, that's so exciting. What do you suppose would happen if I quadruple clicked? You have to have pretty good, good finger movements to do this. Let's try it right here. Four clicks selected an entire paragraph. Multiple sentences, but it selected the whole paragraph. Again, if I'm editing a document, it may be that I want to delete the entire paragraph, or maybe I just want to cut it put it in the pasteboard or in the clipboard and paste it somewhere else. So the old quadruple click. And now for the same price at no extra fee for shipping or handling or anything, we throw in the control option. Suppose that I find a word here like pictures and I do the double click. Whoops, just the double click, click, click. By the way, if you selected something you didn't want, you just go to someplace else and single click. It moves the cursor around, but it undoes the selection. Okay, double clicked on the word picture. Now, I'm going to hold the control key down, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to double click on the word image. And now I'm going to go and uh, double click on this word image. And, um, hmm, trick. So you can see when you hold the control key down in conjunction with the other selection trick, that now you can select disjointed things all at the same time. Why would you ever want to do that, you might ask. Um, maybe you want to make a series of words to be bold italic, and they're not side by side. Well, you can select them all and do in one one click double trick quick clickety click trick to me and then you can go over to your properties options which is either in a pull down menu or in the new uh, version of LibreOffice it's in this sidebar where you have bold and italic and underline and all those good things Roman uh, font selection and etc um, by the way the control click trick works even when you let's go here and let's do the the shift click trick so I'm going to shift click to there and now I'm going to keep the control key down and see if this works shift click to there whoops no it didn't work I thought I had this going this afternoon uh, shift click and then control yeah I can add more things to my selection even when they're disjointed. And by the way, that control selection is the same trick you use if, perchance, you are organizing your files with File Explorer. Well, let's look at File Explorer since I raised that question. And uh, let's open up Louis Stuff. Here's a folder called Install Stuff. Suppose that I wanted to remove several things from here. Um, I could use a control click to select things that are not together. So the control click for selecting things not close together works the same in the file explorer as it does when you're selecting text. 
The same with a shift click trick. If I want to select everything from Adobe down to M Audio, I hold the shift key down and now I've selected from where I started to where I ended the click. So shift click works in File Explorer to select names of files the same way it works within word processing. So let's uh, look at some pictures. Here's about 600 and some pictures, 625 pictures. So if I want to select this picture, hold the control key down, and that one and that one, and that one, I can use a control click trick to select here and there. Now I can, when I right click and say copy, I'm going to copy all of those pictures files that you see highlighted. Similarly, if I want to select everything from this butterfly, shift, click to that butterfly, all the ones that were lined up side by side got selected when I did the shift click trick. Just like all the characters in the word processing got selected when I did the shift click trick from there to there. This is very handy if you want to reorganize whether they're picture files, document files, or all of the above. Okay, so just recapitulating for text selection and some other things, you can use the click shift click trick, the double click trick to select a whole word, the triple click to select a sentence, and the quadruple click to select a paragraph, and you can add the control key to select disconnected pieces of text or files or whatever.